Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, the last episode, uh, we ended the we ended with me in the kitchen making cookies. Uh, so this episode, I just thought it would be appropriate if I uh, started the episode in the kitchen also, uh, finishing up a cookie or the last last couple cookies that I have left. So this is yours truly, Craig Howe, welcoming you back uh, for another episode of me creating uh, my second art storybook, uh, 24 album covers. I'm in the process with this, excuse me, in this episode, I'm in the process of still working on the second of those five new paintings for the book. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, take you over to the easel, and then from there I'm going to show you a real quick preview of where I left off and what's going on uh, for the rest of this episode. And if you join me, thank you. Uh, I misled you. Uh, we're not going over to the easel. We're not going over to the workstation slash drafting table. Uh, where I'm going, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm heading out. It's Wednesday evening. I'm going down to my friend's studio. Her name's Karen. And uh, I'm going to be taking all my, my bag with all my paint gear in it. Uh, take the camera stuff. Uh, because when I get down there, I'm going to uh, let you see a little bit of her studio. Introduce you. And I'm also going to uh, let her show you some examples of her paintings. Uh, she's a very accomplished artist, a lot of landscape, still life. And I want her to uh, just give you some, uh, a greater understanding of the things I've been talking about over the course of the past few episodes about light sources and warm and cool colors. Uh, she'll have a, a different way of explaining it to you. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, getting ready to head out, and I'll see you down there. All right, this is the studio, Karen's studio. And you can see Karen in the distance waiting for me to come in. Just to give you a good idea of what the studio looks like. What I'm working with, as you saw from last, uh, the last episode, was that I'm going to be working primarily with the jukebox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this painting away. I'm going to bring Karen over. I'm going to let her show her some of her paintings and the differences in how she uses the colors to get these lights and darks <clears throat> or light sources coming in with the color temperatures. Okay, like I just said, uh, when I, I'm going to give you Karen now. Right here. Good enough? That's good enough. Okay, so I brought three paintings out. Craig asked me to talk about how I approach um, color temperature, warm and cool, and value, which is light and dark. Um, value always trumps color and temperature and everything. Anyway, so this is a pretty um, standard example of the kind of still life that I do. Uh, and in this particular painting, the light is coming very sharply from this direction. I've got this bright orange cantaloupe and actually a pretty intense or, or chromatic blue cloth in the front. So very, very clearly, the cantaloupe is a warm yellow orange. The fabric is a cool blue, blue green. Okay. Now it's also receiving light. So the three big points of light are on the, the cantaloupe on the cloth right here. And then the reflection on the big jug. So how do you, how do you make sure that you can see all those lights? <clears throat> For one thing, the light on the, the um, blue cloth is cool. It's grayed out a little bit. You get a couple little highlights there, put a touch of the orange in there and it just talks back and forth. The same thing with the, the vase. So the vase is a cool brown. We have a cool gray background here. Um, and you've got your highlight. And again, a couple little flickers of yellow as if it's reflecting onto the, the jug or onto the tabletop. So if I had made the background beige, like the, the linen liner here, 
these things would be so flat and so pushed forward and in your face. But in toning the background, keeping it cool, keep, keeping it light, but not the very lightest thing on this side, and then bring it around to dark. So you've got this whole circle, or, or spiral, I should say, that really finishes right here where the brightest um, spot is on the painting. Um, if this were a green apple, it wouldn't be nearly as strong as if it is the orange cantaloupe. So number two, thank you, Craig. OK, this one's a little bit more subtle. So clearly, the most important thing in the painting, and you'll notice it's, it's the same construction again, vase, fruit, cloth. Um, but the persimmons are the, the strongest, most powerful. They're the warmest. They're the lightest part of the whole painting. But then I have this red cloth, sort of a tapestry uh, table runner sort of thing. But it's a different red. It's a duller, cooler, darker red. The vase is a cool gray. The tabletop is a cool gray. Now, on this one, I have the background as a warm blue-green. Um, I like to use a color called olive green, which is a transparent. It's a really good glazing color. So the, the brightness of the, the persimmons, the light on the, the um, dark red cloth, but also the reflected light on the, the vase, that's where you want your eye to go. So the dark background, the cooler dark background, relatively cooler, um, pushes the, the eye forward so that it stays right in the, the center of interest here. You can also notice here on this side, this is called a lost edge. Okay, so as the object rolls away from the light, the edge of the object is much less distinct than here where the light is hitting it very strongly. You have a sharp edge. Okay, so this one is a portrait of my little buddy Riley. Okay, um, it's, it's a much more a la prima painting. In other words, done all at once. It's quite thick. There's a lot of texture. And I did it as a demo for my students, uh, which is pretty much the only way we meet nowadays. The cat was sitting on a box in front of a window. I didn't really care about the architecture, but there was this really bright light behind the cat. And yet, because of the cat's fur and coloring, there was his white fur against this bright light. And I, it, I wanted it to have that halo effect, all right, which is it did. So what I did was I added a little yellow ochre to the white on this edge of the cat so that it was very warm, all right, not, not cold like right out of a tube. But the, yeah, the white behind it, I tinted with a little bit of blue. So it's very, very subtle, but it's just enough so that little bit of cool white next to the, the yellow white creates a separation. You get that sense of the cat glowing in the light there. So color, temperature, value, those are the things we have to pay attention to all the time. Thanks, Carol. You're welcome. Well, I'm back. Back at the studio, and I'm not only going to put my stuff away, but I'm going to also close down this particular episode. Uh, I'm going to work on the painting some more, and when I come back for the next episode, I'll show you uh, all the progress that I've made. Until then, uh, thank you. You're wonderful. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, by all means, hit the little red button down below. Uh, again, there's a uh, bell that shows up. Uh, you click on that, it gives you a chime notification of when to uh, when I've posted. So, with that, have a wonderful evening, wonderful week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.